solid as a rock. New Hampshire Motor Speedway continues to feed New England's appetite for racing. Today, the NASCAR k and Pro Series will crown a winner, and it will honor a legend. Welcome everyone to New Hampshire Motor Speedway, the site of today's Apple Barrel 125. Cars lined up at the end of Pit Road, getting ready for their pace laps to go 125 laps here at the Magic Mile. I'm Dave Burns, Parker Kligerman joins me, Derek Pernasiglio as usual down on Pit Road. And Parker, you kind of grew up around this place, this is a big deal. It is. It's great to see this place have another event in terms of supporting, you know, grassroots racing. It's sort of a premier event for all of them up here in New Hampshire. Who doesn't love the Magic Mile, though? It puts on great racing. It's a fast track, but it also races a bit like a short track. So that's always been a bit of a debate, but uh, I've always enjoyed this place. Last race, the combo at Gateway. Chase Cabry had some issues. He's pretty much out of the championship with two races to go now, Parker. Right, so Sam Mayer gets the fun tour right now where he can basically just go for wins because he essentially has his championship locked up. And of course, you can't race in New England without thinking about Mike Stefanik. With more on that story, here's Derek. Guys, today at the New Hampshire Motor Speedway, we honor Mike Stefanik, a two-time champion of the NASCAR K&N Pro Series. Mike Stefanik had 10 wins here at the Magic Mile, two of them coming in this series. His success in this series was unprecedented. He won two championships in the NASCAR K&N Pro Series while also simultaneously winning the 1997 and 1998 Modified Tour Championships in the same season, a feat that will more than likely never be matched. It was those accomplishments that propelled him to the NASCAR Gander Outdoor Truck Series, becoming the 1999 Rookie of the Year. Today, his former car owner, Mike Grigi, has outfitted Max McLaughlin's car with a tribute scheme of the years he won his two K&N championships. Mike Stefanik was 61 years old. Now, Derek, thanks. It was a big tragedy. He died in an ultralight plane crash. Uh, he was piloting the plane last Sunday. Of course, all week people have been sending out their tributes, Parker. He was well-known, well-liked, and what a competitor he was. No doubt, a true racer's racer, the full definition of that. And, you know, the thing I remember about him is watching that Burnham Boilers uh, Bush North car go around Lime Rock. I can remember being about 12 or 13 years old and watching that car and loving that paint scheme. Uh, he'll definitely be missed, but what a legend and a guy who accomplished so much in this sport. Uh, you know, his, his, uh, a lot of fans out there remember what he accomplished for a long time to come. And there he is in the truck series. That was my debut year as well with NASCAR running that 66. He was rookie of the year that year. Almost won the first race of the season that was at Homestead Miami Speedway. But uh, Shirley had talent and Shirley was uh, a champion to be, uh, to be remembered. Uh, Derek mentioned it. Eight wins in the Modifieds here at Loudoun. Two wins in the K&N Pro Series, then the Bush North Series. And uh, Mike Stefanik will be missed, but all day long, as we watch that 51 car of Max McLaughlin, uh, it looks a lot like the Burnham Boilers car, and he'll be remembered. No doubt. I look forward to seeing that car go around here. It brings me back to being that young kid, just hoping for a chance to be in one of these cars one day. You can see Max qualified inside row five there. Chase Cabry on the pole again, the third in a row and fourth of the season for him. So that four car, extremely fast. I know, Parker, even if you can't win the championship, you'd sure like to make another statement today. No doubt. Just rack up the wins. Do You know, it's basically the consolation prize for him as we head to the green flag. Green is out in New Hampshire. Sam Mayer did not get a good start there. Cabry did, and Cabry sails it down into turn one. Here comes Mayer back on the inside. See if that outside gets the run off of turn two. Oh, See, yeah. He's, oh, <laughs> big time. Man, that's major momentum around off of turn two. He knew what he was doing being the outside. So Cabry establishes command of the lead there. You see that black 54. That is Ty Gibbs, often running the 17 for DGR Crosley. Uh, he'll be in the, the Monster Energy colors today. And to his outside, that other black car, Spencer Davis in the 30. We got side by side between Max McLaughlin and Ty Gibbs. And McLaughlin's able to get it. Looks like that outside groove is looking to be the dominant groove right here. I heard of that from some of the drivers coming into this, that that groove was really working well, and it seems like early on it's the groove to be in. A little side draft there from Ty Gibbs. He'll try to complete the pass on McLaughlin now, which is tough to do here, Parker, isn't it? <laughs> well, yeah, see there, it's right there in the center. You want to clear that 51 so you can get back to the throttle, but he just couldn't quite do it, so Max McLaughlin has that momentum and that run off of the top. Now he has to 
seeds position to him, and that's just the tough thing about oh, trying no, to pass the ball. Oh, no, no, he's going to get no. loose. Yes, McLaughlin goes around and just taps the, t oh. the barrier there. Well, that's not a hard hit. Nope. But if it moved that spoiler and some of those things back there, well, it looks all right. So I think they should be able to get away with that if you can get it refired here. You talked about the groove not quite there yet for full grip on the high side. No, that's just a little higher. You saw his right rear was above the hash marks there. And there's some of the gray and dirtiness up there. And that can just, you get a little bit of stuff on your tires. There's not quite the grip to lean on. He probably entered with a lot of speed trying to clear Ty Gibbs and just overcooked a little bit and lost the rear. Crew getting a good look at it now and see if they indeed didn't move anything over like Parker talked about. Uh, but it looks like McLaughlin will be able to continue in the tribute car for Mike Stefanik here at the Magic Mile. k and Pro Series Racing on NBCSN is brought to you by k and High Flow Air Filters and Air Intake Systems. Because everyone loves that fast car smell. Track is clear in Loudon, New Hampshire. Max McLaughlin's car is back on track. And the lead continues to be with Chase Cabry, that white car on the outside. To his inside, Sam Mayer. Green is back out. Nice push from Ty Gibbs in the Black 54. Great push, great restart. Using some of the lessons he's probably watched some of the cup drivers do on Sunday. Yeah, I would think so. Uh, in including, how does that high line work off of two? Yeah, again, very good, just like it did on the initial start. And Cabry rockets out front. Wow, Sam Mayer had a good run. He was beside them, but the momentum on the top side was so great. They just drove by him. Impressive move by Ty Gibbs and Chase Cabry. Sliding it off a of turn four there. Easy to do here, Parker, isn't it, on this uh, flat one-mile track? So easy to do. This place is so tricky because you're asking the car to turn for such a long period of time, and then you're trying, you're begging to get back to throttle while it's still turning, and it doesn't want to do any of those things all at once. And then the, right as you're doing that, the corner flattens out, you're on the straightaway. So it's a really tough place, but uh, it's a fun place because it, you use a lot of different driving tools inside the car and driving styles to get the car around here. A couple of first-time drivers, in a sense, uh, Nick Sanchez, first time in a k and Pro Series car, that white number two, and right behind him, the 74 of Josh Berry, first time in a k and Pro Series car on the Magic Mile. It's great to see Josh Berry up here, raced with him for a long time on iRacing growing up. Uh, you know, I know he's been racing for uh, junior motorsports in late model divisions. Really cool to see him getting a shot up in the k and East. Ty Gibbs is dogging Chase Cabry. He's finished second four times in this series, and he wants that lead, Parker. What a move. Got a great run off of turn four. Side dress him, completes the pass down to turn one. Great move by Ty Gibbs. Derek. Ty Gibbs could be the wild card in this race, driving the DGR Crossley number 54 machine. He has two ARCA wins this year at Gateway and Salem, and so far, his five K&N starts in the season with four second-place finishes and one fourth-place finish. He finished on the podium at the Bristol Motor Speedway just a few weeks ago, and he's got a pretty fast car today, and he definitely could be the wild-card winner in this event. Yeah, I think he wants to drop that nickname Mr. Second Place, uh, Parker, in this series, <laughs> so got it done in ARCA, and now trying to do it here in the K&N no Pro Series. Yeah. Yeah, that's just a, you know, that's one of those statistics you don't want to rack up. But if you keep putting yourself in position, you've got to think that you're going to eventually find yourself in victory. And I went through a similar thing in my truck series days, and uh, I think I finished second five times, but eventually I found victory lane. So it, it all comes around. Well, let's see who finished second back in 1995, because it was a big day for the then Bush North series here at the Magic Mile. That's Jerry Marquis. He led a lot, but a late race pile up down in turn three. Look at that mess down there. Set Marquita pit road. And when things got started again, guess who showed up? Mike Stefanik in his k and Pro Series first win here. Went to victory lane, and it was a, the start of a beautiful relationship for him and this track. It's like an old mobile, Parker. Ah, it's cool looking. I love it. So it's sort of the start to that famous paint scheme that he had run in the early 2000s. Back up to speed in 2019, that's Ruben Garcia Jr. And he's currently leading, you see the graphic there, down in Mexico again on the strength of three wins. Not going to be able to get to this championship this year, but it's been a strong year for him. And all the Rev Racing cars, Parker, lately have looked really good. 
Right, and you know, that program is so great. It's cool to see these guys get the opportunities they get there in the Drive diver for Diversity program, and I think it's, uh, it's great to see someone like himself who's been so successful down in Mexico getting the chance to come up here prove what he can do on this stage at this level and hopefully progress through the ranks to the top of NASCAR. You're used to seeing Brandon McReynolds behind the wheel of the 74 there. Some sort of scheduling conflict, the team says, uh, was the issue for him not being here. And now NASCAR is uh, telling us debris on the track, and they will put out the caution. Slow everybody down. But yeah, Brandon expects to be back in the car at Dover. For today, it'll be Josh Berry. And the leader continues to be that guy, Ty Gibbs. Yes, he does. Not exactly wanted to see when he had such a commanding lead in this race. There oh. it is, coming right toward the camera. Oh, yeah. Can't quite tell what that is. Not something you want to hit. Derek, nope. the 74 is on pit road. Josh Berry driving the Visconti Motorsports, number 74, comes into the attention of the crew. They are going to take a wedge adjustment to the car. Josh Berry said he thinks that he can beat the guys in front of him. If he can just get ahead of him, he can start to pull away. There you go. Come in and make your car better. Max McLaughlin on pit road as well. There are two scheduled brakes today. They'll have one additional set of tires they can put on the race car whenever they choose. 125 laps total this afternoon, unless they go to overtime. And it's always a decision about when to put those tires on, but I'd assume, as we normally see, they'll wait till as late as possible. Colin Garrett also on off of pit road. We'll be back with the green flag in a moment. Back at New Hampshire Motor Speedway for the Apple Barrel 125. Resuming as Chase Cabry, the white car on the inside, is now second place. The leader is Ty Gibbs in the black car on the outside. Green is back out. And what a good restart for Cabry on that inside line. What Didn't expect move. that, yeah. Yeah, it's almost a slide job. Look how high he goes up. Ty Gibbs is going to use the crossover. Drive right back by him. He just sent it down to turn one. Couldn't get the stick. Boy, that was fun, and it shows you kind of a couple of different uh, faces of the corners here at New Hampshire, doesn't it? I mean, if you get down in there hot like that, you're going to definitely fade out and let a guy do the crossover. Exactly, and so he just, he had a great restart. He tried his hardest to make it stick there in the center, but to no avail, Ty Gibbs let him go on by, cut under him, drove right back by. So I love the, I love the move. I love the confidence. Uh, maybe towed it back a little bit next time, and he could get the pass done. Remember, Chase Cabry was the pole sitter, fastest car in qualifying. So he figures he's got a good number four there. Try to win today. And he's got the 54 still in his sights there, coming off a of four. Right, and that's key. Just don't let him get away. You know, I think that's the thing right now is to start measuring yourself against him. We say it all the time in this series, but with the brakes set in there, you just want to be evaluating. What's he doing better? What's his car do that yours can't? So you can tell your crew chief, hey, here's what I need. Make the right adjustments and go beat them later in the race. Doesn't pay anything right now to, uh, to lead at this moment. Josh Berry in the 74 was on pit road for adjustments. And I'll try to get by the 30 of Spencer Davis. And we heard the report from Derek saying that if he, he felt like if he could just get ahead of these guys with a little adjustments, he could be better than them. So we'll see if that comes true. You know, there is an element of dirty air here, this place. Although it's, it's you know, fairly flat and uh, a shorter track at a mile, there is an element of dirty air that you'll run into running right behind someone like he is with Spencer Davis right there. So you, you will find a little bit of... Uh, an advantage getting ahead of someone if you can make it happen to get some cleaner air. Oh, careful there. Sam Mayer just a little bit out of the bottom groove there, and now Garcia is going to find a way by. Another little bit of a crossover. We might be seeing that throughout the day here, with that high line being uh, the predominant line. You're going to want to fight for it all day. Mayer back to the high side now. Oh, close, Derek. Consistency, Dave. That's the key to winning championships, and that's exactly what Sam Mayer has done all season long in the 2019 season. He is the point leader. He has 10 starts this year, three wins, but check this out. Nine out of those 10 starts this year in the series have been top five finishes. And there it is, Parker. A true statement, if there ever was one, consistency wins championships. Exactly. In this type of format, that's a thing that, you know, they're going to reward you for the performance over the entire season. And that's from race one to the last race. What you do in each and every position counts. 
Uh, and the best way to win these sorts of championships is just to be consistent like that. And we've seen it over the years. That's the sort of thing that leads to these championships. And, you know, at this level, I think that's a good thing because it really makes a driver think about the bigger picture, think about a whole season-long body of work. Uh, that's what Sam Mayer and that 21 group have done. Good look at Tanner Gray there, the third-place car in the 15. He's had a good season as well. Gray's run in the East and the West for DGR Crosley in his uh, rookie season, one at South Boston earlier this year. And one of the most interesting transitions we've heard of, uh, you know, coming to this series from right. drag racing into <laughs> oval track racing. So he's had a, a massive learning curve, but done a great job all season long. And I think really sets him up to uh, continue to build on that next season. Ty Gibbs, by the way, trying to make it a big weekend for Grandpa Coach. Uh, in the Xfinity Series last night in Richmond. That race was won by Christopher Bell. And, of course, tonight, the Cup guys will be going at it for 400 laps. And, uh, you know, if they win that, it could be a triple play for Coach this weekend. Oh, well, that would be nice. It's one thing. be a nice present to your uh, grandpa there. Yep. But Chase Cabry is keeping it honest. He's not going to let him get away with this. So he's, uh, you know, he fell back a little bit there after making that lunge at the restart and now he started to crept up right onto his rear bumper he's trying to run a little bit different line there i've been noticing off two he's a little higher off four he's trying to get clean air to that nose it's uh i think he's start doing exactly what we talked about he's trying to assess how can i get by this 54 car what do i need inside my car to be better than him so that when i do get by i can drive away and to be clear coach gibbs doesn't own this 54 car but he sure loves to see his grandson race, watches as often as he can, and is paying very close attention today as Ty Gibbs continues to lead in New Hampshire. Ty Gibbs continues to keep the hammer down in the Apple Barrel 125 from New Hampshire Motor Speedway. Chase Cabry is not letting him get away. Tanner Gray there in third has him in sight as well as they put a lap on Farmer Bob there in the 11 car. It's actually a farmer, Parker. <laughs> It's true. Bob Pulaski uh, from New York yeah, farms about 1,800 acres and does this for fun. I'm taking your word for it. That's cool. <laughs> Great to hear. No, uh, he, I love that. He's raced at Watkins Glen a couple of times right near his home and decided to get some oval track experience this weekend, so they're having a big time. Not as fast as they'd like to be, but, heck, if you've only run road courses and you've only been doing this a couple of years, uh, this place could be a little intimidating. No doubt. This is a tough oval, really tough oval. I remember the first time I went in here, I really struggled, sort of figured it out. But you know what? That's what this series is all about, especially when you look back to its Bush North days and that sort of thing. It wasn't just for young up-and-comers. It was a series for people that were, you know, maybe weekend warriors or, you know, people that were making a career out of being at this level. So uh, I love to see it go back to its roots like that and have old Farmer Bob here. I see what you did there. Roots, Farmer Bob. <laughs> well played. Let's just hope his car isn't yep. plowing. <laughs> oh, no. Derek, who are you watching? Quickly. Chase Gabriel from Tampa, Florida, runs in the second spot right now, and he is second in the points. He's 30 points out of the point lead that's being held by Sam Mayer. He won the spring race here, and he finished eighth last year in this event. And uh, just to get some laps earlier in the week, he was out at the Newbridge Speedway racing an outlaw cart on dirt, and I know because I was racing with him and banging wheels with him out there on the track, and I can tell you that he's just as good on dirt as he is on pavement. Now, how about that? Uh, good way. Drivers like to keep seat time, Parker, in almost anything to keep their, keep their senses sharp. There's a lot of drivers that have had, had out there to that Millbridge Raceway uh, to do those dirt outlaw carts. I'm not the most educated on them. I know Kyle Larson has done a little bit of that, so definitely a cool thing to do, a way to get some dirt experience, maybe at a lower level, an affordable level, but uh, it's cool to hear a driver like Chase Cabrera doing that because it all helps. As you said, you know, it's just seat time. It's just, it's just learning new things and new tools that you can apply at different times as a driver and just continually I always talk about, you know, add it to your arsenal. Add it to what you have at your disposal to deploy at certain points of a race inside that car and you might just find something you didn't know you had inside so uh, I think that's a great thing and it's definitely applying something right here because mm -hmm. it's a bit of pressure there on Ty Gibbs this lead lead battle is not going away Chase Cabry is filling his mirror on every lap as we approach the second break here uh, three segments to run today and uh, this will be the second break here and we'll see if everyone puts on the fresh tires gets ready for the final to the 125th lap or beyond if there's a little extension of play here. 
And I wonder, you know, if there's an element of Chase Cabry just deciding to ride this out till that break, sit behind him, don't let him realize what you're doing better, don't let him realize what maybe he needs to do better inside that car so you can make the right adjustments here in this break and be able to beat him on the next one, so on the next run. So I think this is, uh, this is a very interesting battle. Aside from these two running really close on track, I think there's a little bit, oh, well, he got a big run there. Forget everything I just said. He's going to try for it. Coming to the line here. And the leader scored at the line will be Gibbs. But here comes Cabry. They're going to use Max McLaughlin as a block. Who has the run off the corner? It's oh. going to be Cabry. Yeah, he got a great run. So everything I just said was untrue. Uh, <laughs> he actually wanted to take the lead the entire time. And now he has it. Got a huge run off, too. Built a little bit of a gap there. So definitely this four car is coming online. And therefore, Ty Gibbs... And that 54 team are going to have to make some form of adjustment when we get back uh, under this uh, break here. That's right. I, I know why you were going there, because he was just kind of stalking him. Didn't really look like he was, you know, pressuring him for the lead there. But, boy, right there at the end, right by went the four. Yeah, he saw the opportunity there with McLaughlin on the bottom. It sort of just Ty Gibbs almost had to check up a little bit. Chase Cabry was really good down in three and four. You know, he wasn't getting quite as a good a runoff, too, but through the center of three and four, he was really gaining a lot on Ty Gibbs. And so the second that Ty had to check up just a little bit, he used that speed advantage in the center, got beside him, and drove around him with the momentum on the top. So Cabry back to the point after sitting on the pole and leading laps early. Coming up on the second break here. Of course, the idea with the four car now, Parker, would be to not undo what is so good about that car right now, right? Well, that's always a fear. You never want to dial it out. <laughs> we've, all, <laughs> we've all had that issue, and I think every crew chief and driver thinks about that one at times. But uh, normally, you know, when you have a car this good, you're talking ones and twos is the adjustment. And there is the caution. Yep. Second segment caution here. NASCAR will put that out. Everyone can come to pit road. And they'll get just a quick five minutes to go ahead and make changes on their cars, change tires if they want to, and get their place back in line if they make the call back on time. We'll see who gets it right. Adjustments being made in New Hampshire. Don't adjust your set. We'll be right back. It's been another great day for race fans at the New Hampshire Motor Speedway. And honoring Mike Stefanik, that is how the day started. There'll be a modified race following this K&N race. And no matter which you choose, K&N slash Bush North or the Modifieds, Mike will be long remembered as the champion that he was. Lost him a week ago. A lot of fans here remember him for a long, long time. Parker, I'm not sure how this is going to play out in the final laps of this race because we've seen two very, very strong cars at the front. Both Ty Gibbs and Chase Cabry at different times have just looked like they could beat the whole field. And that's the key. They were both good at different times. Looked like Ty Gibbs had a little better short-run car. Maybe Chase Cabry had a better long-run car. Here we get the green flag. We'll see who comes out on top. Cabry is the restart leader. He gets to the line first. Here comes Ty Gibbs. He'll take that inside line. Can he do the slide job and take it away completely? Firing back. Yep. Just enough of a fender there to keep Cabri at bay. And now Cabri loses a couple oh. of positions. Is he in trouble? No. Oh, something is wrong there. Either he had to check up really hard or he had some sort of issue or hiccup inside the car there. But he lost a ton of speed off of turn two. Looks like he's fighting back now. He's to the outside of Josh Berry. Maybe he just had to check up a little bit. Oh, real close to the wall off four. Lost all that good momentum on the outside line that had gotten him the lead a couple of times on restarts. And now the four of Chase Cabry fighting back. Lost three positions, gained one of them back, but he sits in fourth. He really has his work cut out for him. You know, we talked earlier in the race about dirty air does apply here a little bit. And that's really going to hurt him in his battle with Ty Gibbs to have to drive all the way back through these cars. From that deficit, going to have to pass Tanner Gray and Sam Mayer to get back up there. I just think it's a tall order unless we get another caution. And what's up with Sam Mayer now? Did they make good adjustments on that car? The would-be champion with two races to go and a 30-point lead coming in. Uh, did not look like his car was as fast as he needed it to be, certainly to be up front. So what did they do to the 21? Can Sam get back in and win again in the K&M Pro Series this year? 
Well, we've uh, seen him have dominant cars before, and I think today is one of those days you mentioned. It's more of a top five car. It looks like Ty Gibbs is starting to get away from him. And here, oh, as we're watching Chase Cambry try to hold off Josh Berry, you know, this is what you don't want to see. A, a guy that had an obvious chance at winning this race makes a small mistake off of turn two there, gets behind, and you don't want to see him overdriving, sliding all over the place like you're seeing there, and Josh Berry drives by. So this is uh, where he really needs to settle down, get focused, hit his marks, and apply that, you know, start to use that speed that he had. Uh, it seems like he's trying to make up for some lost ground right now and probably trying a little too hard. Third place car right now is Tanner Gray. Here's Derek with more. Tanner Gray runs in the third spot right now, and the NHRA champion does pretty good at going in circles, but he just came home the radio, and he said the car is tight all the way through the corner. What does that do here, Parker, generally? Well, tight is slow. Um, <laughs> among other things. <laughs> among other things, it's never great, uh, especially tight in the center is a very common problem here because you're, you know, going from a, a very long straightaway with a very flat entrance. You're asking the car to turn for a very long period of time without much banking, so it, it lends itself to normally being tight in the center of the corner. Uh, and a lot of times, you know, that's something you'll fight when you also have a little bit of loose on entry. So they kind of compound on each other. But as we see Spencer Davis working inside of Chase Cabry, that's uh, Chase continuing to fall back here. Not quite showing the speed that we saw out of most of this race. And did they go the wrong way on an adjustment? Or is there a problem that just uh, showed its ugly head as the restart happened, but Cabry is not the car he was at the beginning? Or I guess you could also say, did the others make just awesome adjustments on their cars? Well, I think this is such a drastic oh, difference. Oh, no. Out of the line there. That car jumped sideways. Yeah, this is... I, I have to think if, if they made large adjustments, which I would have been shocked to hear, considering that they, uh, you know, were in the lead at that time. And, you know, could this set of tires have an issue? I don't know. I, I think it was uh, odd how he got basically tied off a of turn two on that restart, had to check up, and now it looks like he has a very loose race car. So... Uh, I have to think that there's there's something missed there. And also, I, I go back to the fact that when you lose that, oh, again, just can't hold the line. It's uh, That car is certainly out of control. All three teammates running together here, which is interesting. Nick Sanchez, first start for him in the K&N Pro Series. Ruben Garcia there in the six. But, man, I mean, he just can't even Whoa. hardly control that car in the corners, Parker. Hey, I... I mean, it looks like you could possibly have a tire issue of some sort. You know, when, that, when a car changes that much, that is no longer the driver over driving or anything. That is, there is obviously an issue. And you, when you can't hold the line and you're going drastically slower than everyone else, you see there again, something is amiss inside that race car. Hoping for a caution now so he can get that car down to pit road and they can figure out what in the world is going on. But Chase Cabry, uh, as you see the graphic there, yeah, he was the leader and now is falling back at the Magic Mile. Meanwhile, up front, this is for second place. A little smoke out of the 21 of Sam Mayer there. And Tanner. Fifth, yeah, 15 of Tanner Gray is trying to take advantage of him. Yeah, he's been hounding him since the restart. He's been right there about a car length back. You don't want to ride back that close too long. You know, I get it. I talk about it a lot in this series. You're just heating everything up. You're, you know, taking in their dirty air that whole time. It's going to... You're going to pay the price and the penalty for doing that later in a run, so you've got to make these moves quick when you have the opportunity. Tanner Gray's right there on him. He just needs a chance to be able to get a little momentum, maybe even <laughs> oh, a little bumper to him. Yep. That'll get it done, too. Yep, and out of the way goes Mayer. Well, you know, Derek reported the 15 car was tight, but apparently the 21 car was in worse shape. And now Sam drops back a couple of positions. Josh Berry gets by as well. And that battle, by the way, was taking place two seconds behind race leader Ty Gibbs. So... Wanting a way by for sure was Tanner Gray, and he made a way by. Yeah, that's uh, the 21 car had an assisted loose there <laughs> uh, in the center of one and two. I like that. So uh, I think that was, looking at how much faster he was, it might have been a large bump, but it certainly wasn't unwarranted in the fact that he was faster. You know, if he wants to contend for the win of this race, he had to get that clean air on the nose and start making headway towards Ty Gibbs. By the way, you saw that uh, black and... and um, 
Deglo red car, the 74 of Josh Berry. Uh, the why of why he is in that car today instead of Brandon McReynolds, uh, the team put out a statement saying that uh, there was a scheduling conflict with Brandon McReynolds and they needed somebody to get in the car and um, they knew Josh Berry through crew chief Bruce Cook and said, hey, what's Josh doing? Well, at the same time, they signed Josh up for next year to be a driver development coach with a young driver they're bringing along. There's a 74 of Barry. So Josh has not been in a Canon Pro Series car for five years, Parker. So he's doing a pretty good job, I would say. Great job. And, you know, he's done a great job in that Junior Motorsports late model. I see him contending for wins all the time. Uh, you know, I've known Josh for a long time from racing with him on iRacing growing up and and, uh, and sim racing in general. And so it's cool to see him to get this opportunity and, and to do a great job with it. You know, you always like to see when a young driver gets that opportunity, they get that chance to really take hold of it and, and excel. And that's what he's doing here, right? You know, sort of handy, hounding uh, Tanner Gray a little bit. Mm -hmm. Could be looking at possibly getting into second place, which would be just Ooh. a great chance. Oh, wow, that was close to the wall. Did he get it? Couldn't quite tell, yeah. Maybe, maybe not. But boy, he is right there battling Gray for second place. It's got a little scuff on the right rear there, so just maybe tapped it a little bit. But no harm, no foul. He's going to continue this pace and continue to pressure Tanner Gray. Working lap 99 of 125, so winding down here at the Magic Mile with Ty Gibbs still out to a significant lead. Caution out again, and NASCAR's again saying they see something on the track they don't like. For safety's sake, they're going to put the caution out for debris. So Gibbs lead is gone. Ty will hold off the field on the restart when we come back to New Hampshire. Back in New Hampshire, the Apple Barrel 125 nearing its conclusion. Track is cleaned up. Ty Gibbs has cleaned up the restart there and he gets a good one, that black car on the outside. He did. Tanner Gray is going to keep him honest there on the bottom. See how oh, shoot aggressive through. he is there. Yep, slide job. And yep, the crossover. Can he hold it? Can he hold it, though? He's got, he's got a better angle than we saw at Chase Cambry earlier. Oh, they're going to touch off for turn two. And Josh Berry waiting to see what happens there in third in the 74. They're going to make a little more contact there. Look at the donut there just below the 15 on Tanner Gray's car. That's good hard racing. Love to see that. Ty Gibbs gets back to the lead. What an awesome battle. Well, and for if you're Tanner Gray, maybe you thought, this is my one shot. I have got to get Gibbs on the restart because he's been so strong all day. I think that's exactly it, and he did a great job. He really used the inside lane to his advantage, the shorter radius, drove the car harder down into turn one, cleared Ty Gibbs, didn't overstep, though, didn't overdrive the corner so he could get back to the throttle and get the run off of two. He did everything he could. He just didn't have enough when they got down to three and four. Ty is driving like he does not want to be denied today, as he's been several other times this weekend. We've already talked about it. Second place a number of times. Victory lane is his goal. And that's what you want to see out of a young driver. When they've had that, those opportunities to get the win, they haven't been able to do it. They turn it into a positive. They turn it into some sort of motivation that you see a move like that and a drive like he's had today where you're going to go out there and not relinquish to leave this race. You're not going to relinquish victory because you want it so bad. You've been so close before, and I think that's what we're seeing out of Ty Gibbs. Good run today by Nick Sanchez, his first start in the Canon Pro Series. His teammate, oh! Ruben Garcia, trying not to get into the rear quarter panel of the two. Those two got very close. That was lucky to get away with that. And, you know, for Nick, it's been really a... Ever since he told his parents when he was 12 years old, I want to go-kart, I want to go racing. It's been a progression on up further up the ladder. And this year, running late model stocks for Rev Racing. That's his full-time gig. And then, of course, he knew he'd probably be given an opportunity in the K&M Pro Series car at some point. Speaking of opportunity, Parker, look at Josh We're Berry sticking the nose in there. We're seeing it now, going for second place. What a great run by Josh Berry. Can he complete the pass down in three and four? He's not quite side by side with him. I believe Tanner's going to have the momentum off of four. We'll see here. Oh, he does. Tanner holds on to it, but what a great run by Josh Berry and putting a ton of pressure on Tanner Gray. Third car in line there. That's the 21 of Sam Mayer. In fact, let's learn more about the young driver from Wisconsin. 
Sam Mayer, driver of the number 21 NASCAR KM Pro Series car for GMS Racing. I got my start racing when I was four years old in go-karts, and now we're into the K&M Pro Series, and I'm having a blast so far. We won Bristol earlier this year and had a great finish in New Samara, too. Our goal for this year is definitely to go out and win a bunch more races and eventually the championship. I think me and GMS as a whole have a really great shot of winning, and I think that overall I think we're going to have a really good shot at just having a blast and going out there and doing our best. I'm Sam Ayer, and that's your NASCAR Next Gen Profile. Sam swept the Bristol races. He won in Iowa. And as we've mentioned, entered today's race, the penultimate race of the season, 30 points ahead of his closest competitor, that being Chase Cabry. Cabry did all he could, was fast in practice, uh, qualified on the pole, but has had trouble here later in the race. And now Mayer is further forward, Parker, with a lead like that and only two races to go. It's it's pretty much up to Sam now uh, just to kind of cruise in and pick up that trophy in a couple weeks. Right, and you know what? He stated his goals there in that next-gen profile, which was win races and win the championship, and uh, he's going to do exactly that. So uh, that's a prophetic next-gen profile for him, but I think he, uh, you know, he's really earned those wins. He's earned this championship by being so consistent throughout the season, and I know Chase Cabry has put up a heck of a fight, and those two have, have had some really tough battles and, and had some even some run-ins, but mm -hmm. I think at the end of the day, that, you know, that's uh, it's part of this growing up in this series is that you're going to race real tight you're going to race real hard and it's uh you know you've got to put everything on the line if you want to win these races and win the championship well look at that they are running together at this point chase has gotten the uh, four back under control running sixth now behind mayor and i don't mean to make uh mayor's road to the uh, the trophy too easy parker because the final race is at dover and he'll be experiencing yeah. that for the first time and that's the Monster Mile for a reason. Mm -hmm. So they'll go from the Magic Mile to the Monster Mile. And uh, I can tell you that the funny thing about that place is no matter what car you're in, if it's your first time there, you'll get done with your first two or three laps and you'll be out of breath and you'll go, wait a second, I forgot to breathe. <laughs> because it's just that intense. So it's, uh, it's always an eye-opening experience the first time you go around there. Coming to two to go at the line for this young driver, Ty Gibbs, 16 years old. The Gibbs future, of course, you all know Coach Joe Gibbs and his winning ways in all series NASCAR. Uh, Ty is the son of Coy, and of course, uh, Ty racing this year in honor of his uncle, J.D., who passed away in January early this year, uh, wants to dedicate this season to him and has tried to win so that he can do that and, and keep the... Um, keep the positive vibes going after the loss of JD. So the next generation is certainly here for the Gibbs family. We know Coach pays attention all the time, wondering what his grandson's doing. And right now, his grandson is getting the white flag at New Hampshire. One lap to go, Parker, and he will get to victory lane for the first time in this series. It's been a very commanding win. He's had a couple tussles and battles and contenders, but he's held them all off. He's done a great job. Excellent restarts. And when he's gotten out front, he hasn't looked back. Great run for Ty Gibbs. A very deserving victory. Turns three and four. Negotiated for the final time by Ty Gibbs. Coming off of turn four, Ty Gibbs is going to get the win finally in the k &N Pro Series. It comes at New Hampshire. I like that move the inside. That's uh, open wheel-esque to do that sort of thing. And Josh Berry and Tanner Gray side by side across the line for second. Great run for those two as well. There's the happy crew, DGR Crosley, crew chief Chris Lawson there. They do a bang-up job in this series, and they have another one to claim today. We'll be back to talk to this young new winner in the K&M Pro Series when we come back. K&N Pro Series Racing on NBCSN is brought to you by K&N High Flow Air Filters and Air Intake Systems. Because everyone loves that fast car smell. A few signature burnout moves there too, Parker. I think he's going to enjoy being in victory lane today. Ah, who doesn't? It's the best place to be as a racer, victory lane. Especially on a beautiful day in New Hampshire like this. It has been fun. Uh, the Pinty Series, NASCAR Pinty Series, raced earlier today. Andrew Ranger, the victor. Ty Gibbs, the victor here. And later, the Modifieds for the fans here in the stands. But let's hear from Ty as he hops out of his winning car. Derek. 
Well, first-time wins are always special, and even Ty Gibbs splashes us with a little bit of monster energy drink as he celebrates in victory lane. Congratulations, your very first K&N Pro Series win. Tell us what's going through your mind right now because this track is something special. Yeah, man, it was, it was just, I had such a good car. My DJR guys did a great job, you know, Monster and everybody that came on board. I'm just living my dream right now, you know. I just got another K&N win. Two wins back-to-back, -back, one here at Salem and one now at New Hampshire. So I'm pretty excited to, to get this win. You know, it means a lot to me, and it's just it's, it's pretty cool. During the course of the race, the car was basically unbeatable. Was it a point for you where you just settled in and started running laps? Yeah, the whole race, you know, I just, I got the four car got up me, I got a little tight there, and then, and then my guys fixed it, and then we just we just cruised away like a Sunday drop. So, you know, it was, it was a good week, or it was a good race. Easy weekend, easy money, so uh, thanks everybody. Ty Gibbs picks up one for the DGR Crosley team. He comes home the winner today here at the Magic Mile. Yep, after that ARCA win at Salem last week, it is two weeks in a row for him, Parker. Uh, pretty good day. No doubt. He said it was easy win, easy money. I guess that's, <laughs> uh, that's the best kind of day there is in racing. Third to the money was Josh Berry. Nice return to the k &M Pro Series for him. You saw that Chase Cabry, the pole sitter, got back to sixth just behind Sam Mayer, his closest rival. Derek? Nice second place run today for drag racer Tanner Gray. Do you think you could have caught... Ty Gibbs because boy he was really strong. Yeah, no, they were really fast. Um, you know, I felt like we had something there for him there at like like three quarters of the way through the race and uh I just got too tight there at the end. So um, you know, awesome job to, to them. I know uh he's come close a lot this year and just hadn't been able to, to seal the deal. But um you know that restart was a lot of fun racing with him and uh you know I thought maybe if I could clear him then uh, I might have a chance, but I mean they were they were another zip code so um, yeah, it's awesome for DGR Crosley. Uh, you know, I feel like we struggled a little bit here earlier in the year, and you know they went back to the shop and, and worked their butts off and, and brought really fast race cars to the track uh, this weekend. So um, you know, it'd be nice to go back to the shop and, and see where Ty and, and his team ended uh, the race here and, and make it better for next time we come back. Looking back through the race, is there anything that you think you could have done different or wish that you could have done? Man, I don't know. I mean, it, it would have been tough to. to to beat Ty, um, you know, I don't know if there's anything that I could have done. You know, maybe just make better, better uh, calls throughout practice. But like I said, we just got too tight there at the end, and uh, yeah, I just I don't think uh, I don't think we were going to catch him today. So, um, like I said, we'll go back and and uh, go back to the shop and see where they ended, and and try to make it better for uh, next time we come back, and, and try to keep building momentum off this finish into Dover. DJR Crosley finishes one two this afternoon. I have to agree with him. I think that he hit the nail on the head there. You know, that's the type of thing that just is about set up. He put it in a great effort trying to get beside him and get ahead of him on that restart. Just didn't have enough. Better than his fifth place uh, earlier this year at New Hampshire, so making progress. You see the points there. Cabry with a 30-point deficit. Not going to be able to catch Mayer this year. How about third place? Derek? It's a solid day today for Josh Berry, the junior motorsports driver. Brings the number 74 Visconti Motorsports car home on the podium. And pretty special day for you because you don't get to do this very often, do you? No, definitely not. Uh, just, man, I feel very lucky to get opportunity. John Visconti and, and Bruce Cook and everybody, you know, put a, put a deal together for me to drive for him today. And, man, what a blast. You know, we started off and it was just a little too loose. And, you know, we worked on it the first pit stop and then, you know, really started to get better. And, and really, by the end of it, I feel like we could just have some track position. I think we could have run with Ty. It's just so hard to pass here. And it's, you just get so tight in traffic. You know, just a, it's a lot for me to learn, man. I'm a short track racer. I race late models at Hickory and all these places. And, man, you come to these faster places, it's amazing how, how much you got to learn quick. But I think we did a pretty good job, man. If I could do it all over again, I, I, you know, I think we could be a little bit better. Did anybody have anything for Ty Gibbs today? Because he looked really strong out there. Yeah, he was definitely really strong. I think kind of once we got going towards the end, I think if, you know, clean air is so big, and he got out front, he did a good job on the restarts. And like I said, if we could have if we could have uh, got out front, who knows? But, you know, on, in the end, uh, I've raced with Ty a lot, and he's gotten a lot better over the last couple of years. So he, he had a really good race car, and he did a good job. So for me, uh, you know, we didn't qualify great. And to be able to work through the field, work on the car, make it better, and come home with third place is pretty strong. I just got to thank everybody at Visconti Motorsports, Bruce, and all the guys did a great job. And, man, it was just a pleasure to be here. Dave, nice solid run for Josh Berry this afternoon.
It was indeed. I remember a race a couple of years back, Parker, as we look at our next uh, race info, the Musket 250. Those are the modifieds coming up next. When Josh kind of came out uh, for one of his opportunities in the Xfinity Series at Richmond and just ran great. It was unexpected, but yet there he was. A lot of talent there. No doubt. He said he's just a short track racer, but he's got bigger dreams and aspirations than that. And I think with performances like today, he could have that chance. The day began with a tribute to Mike Stefanik, who we lost tragically last weekend. Max McLaughlin driving a tribute car for him in the 51. Had a little bit of trouble, but brought it home at the end of the day. Ty Gibbs did a little more than that. He got to victory lane for the first time in 2019 after finishing second so many times. And the teenager from North Carolina carries on the Gibbs tradition as he goes to victory lane at the Magic Mile. Thanks, everyone, for joining us, and congratulate with us the newest winner in K&N, Ty Gibbs. This copyrighted telecast may not be reproduced, retransmitted, or used in any form without the authorized written consent of NASCAR Broadcasting. NASCAR would like to thank all of our fans for your support.